Hey everybody, Dairy really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki, Demon of the Fleeting Blossom. And I'm apologizing in advance because you may have noticed in the last video my voice was a little bit hoarse and I was kind of nasally and that's because I, well, I don't know why I'm feeling hoarse, but um, well, Heisuke's voice is a little bit hard on my throat, but I really like doing that voice for him and a couple other characters. But as for nasally, I seem to have some kind of seasonal allergy going on. Who the hell gets a seasonal allergy in the winter? But that's what it seems like. So I'm doing my best though, trying to keep my sinuses as clear as possible. So please bear with me. I'm sorry about that. But let's get back into things. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read your story. And here, I'll stay here. New text this time. The Imperial Restoration shook Kyoto to its core. The Shogun and his government suddenly found the ground giving away beneath their feet. The domains that had long opposed the Shogunate began to gather in Kyoto with the Satsuma at their head. Yoshinobu Tokugawa fled to Osaka and was soon followed by more and more of his ministers and associates. The Shogunate had begun its withdrawal from Kyoto. The Shinsengumi followed. Our standing orders were to provide protection for Yoshinobu, who had taken up residence in Osaka Castle. For that reason, among others, our headquarters was moved to the Fushimi Magistrate's office, which was situated along an important route between Kyoto and Osaka. The moon looked somehow different from the Magistrate's office than it had from elsewhere in the city. What's going to happen to us? There was no one there to answer me. The rebel soldiers were growing more restless by the day. It seemed that war was inevitable now. The only question was when. If one listened very carefully, it almost seemed as if one could hear the footsteps of war coming closer. Closer. Yes. Just like... What? Morning. Uh, what's with that look? I struggled desperately to regain my composure. Uh, oh, no, it's nothing. Um, morning? Did you just get up? Yeah, just a few minutes ago. Hmm, I guess it isn't really morning, huh? It's weird though, you know. I get sleepy just before the sun comes up, and then as soon as it's dark, I wake up. That's the life of a fury. His smell turned bitter for just the barest fraction of a second. Heisuke had been a fury for two months, which meant he'd been sleeping during the day. I hadn't been able to see him much, and I was beginning to get a little lonely. How are you feeling? Any changes? Nah, I feel normal. Like, really normal. And it doesn't feel like anything's changed, honestly. Hijikata's the same heart as he always was, for instance. Shin and Sano kept saying they don't even know why I bother coming back to life if I was just going to be as big of an idiot as I'd been before. When I tell them to shut up, they just laugh. Yep, everything's still the same. I was pretty sure that was just their way of trying to tell him that he was still the same Heisuke had been before. When it looked like he might die, Harada and Nagakura were really worried. I had been too, of course, but that was neither here nor there. Besides, there are a lot of people who think you are dead, and they're really sad about it. Oh, the guys from my unit, huh? Yeah, I wish I could tell them I was actually still alive. Officially, Heisuke was dead, and his funeral had been well attended. He was clearly missed. I found myself wondering, if I were to die, would my father mourn me? I'm sure your family's worried too. He frowned suddenly, and looked at me for a moment before turning away. Had I said something I shouldn't have? You know how when you came to Kyoto, you told us you were looking for your family? For Koto, I mean. Um, yeah. What about it? Well, to tell you the truth, I got a little jealous. I'm not really allowed to go look for my parents. Not allowed? I guess I might as well tell you. Have you ever heard of a place in Issei called Toto Domain? Well, that's where I'm from. A place named after you. Or a place you're named after? Wait, then that would mean... Yeah, my old man's the big guy. I don't know much about him, though. I'm just his... bastard, I guess. Until that moment, I hadn't realized Heisuke had never told me about where he was from, or what his past had been like. Anyway, he sends me some cash every month, so long as I don't go looking for him. Hush money, I guess. So, you were jealous because I was looking for my father? He laughed but it was flat and without humor. I was just an accident for him. So yeah, I don't think my parents would be sad to hear I died. Hell, the old man will probably throw a party. He doesn't have to waste his money keeping some brat quiet anymore. 
I felt I had to say something. Uh... You know that's not true. You know that's not true. I didn't know what kind of people Heisuke's parents might have been. They could have been good or bad or simply indifferent. But right then, I felt they couldn't be completely unconcerned with whether or not he was dead. After all, they were his parents. Maybe their circumstances meant they couldn't be with you as much as, as they'd like, but I'm sure your parents loved you very much. What kind of evidence do you have for that? I only just told you about them, and pretty much all I said was they exist. Look, it's been a long time. I don't really need comforting, okay? He didn't seem angry, just apathetic. I shook my head. Well, you're still getting money every month, aren't you? That means whoever's sending it at least wants you to have enough money to be happy, right? If they didn't care whether or not you lived or died, then why send you money in the first place? Well, since they're, they think he's dead, they shouldn't be sending money anymore, right? The theory I'd formed was that his parents wanted to be with him, but couldn't. They knew money was a poor substitute for a family, but at least it was something. It seemed reasonable. Oh. Well, it made him, ha made him happy. He was quiet for a few minutes, but at last his face burst out in a grin and he laughed. <laughs> Man, people ever tell you you're way too optimistic? N no, I, I mean, I don't think... What's so funny? Nothing, nothing. But he only laughed more. After I'd frowned at him for a while, his expression grew more somber, and the faraway look from before returned to his eyes. Well, I guess if for some crazy reason you are right, then maybe there is someone out there who said I'm dead. Then maybe someday you can tell them the truth. I'm sure they'd like that. The new year had come and gone. It was the 3rd of January. Before we'd even had time to let the excitement of the new year soak in, war was upon us. One of the major routes from Osaka to Kyoto ran by the Fushimi Magistrate's office, a number of soldiers loyal to the Shogun were traveling to Kyoto by that particular route one day when they found themselves confronted by Satsuma's soldiers. Fighting broke out and before long, the battle had spread to the magistrate's office. The Satsuma had already set up their men on the high ground and spent most of the day raining cannon fire on the Shinsengumi and anyone else unfortunate enough to be in range. Wait, is this skippable? I guess not. As the light began to fade, the guns on the hill gradually fell silent and it seemed that the day's battle was over. The men guarding the magistrate's office let out a great sigh of relief. You still alive, Sonu? Barely. I really thought we were done for. It was practically raining bullets and cannonballs for a while there. Bastards! They think they're so great just because they got the high ground. Guns are for chumps, alright? A real man uses swords. I agree. Swords are so much cooler than guns. He spoke for everyone there. The bombardment had gone on all day with no respite, and the vaunted skill of the Shinsengumi meant little if they couldn't get close enough to their enemies to strike with a sword. Nagakura and the rest had done their best to protect the magistrate's office, but they had been forced into an entirely defensive battle and had little to show for it. What's going to happen now? We've been at a disadvantage thus far, but now that night has fallen, we can turn the tables. Their guns will be difficult to aim in the dark. We can't afford to miss this chance. We must counterattack. Saito is right. Um, Hijikata, what were our losses today? Even Hijikata was having trouble hiding how tired he was. He shook his head slowly and sighed. Bad. If we screw this up tonight, we might as well just surrender tomorrow. Then it's finally time to take the fight to them. We are cut out for this defensive crap. To the front lines! I agree. If these gun battles continue, our position will only deteriorate. Our biggest problem is just going to be getting together enough men. A lot of my guys are out of commission. Yeah, man, I sure wish we had Kondo or Soji right now. Kondo had been shot before the New Year and had gone to Osaka to recover under Dr. Matsumoto's care along with Okita. He was doing much better, but he was still in no condition to fight. Guess we'll have to use the Fury Corps. They should still be fresh. I'm sure Kondo would have done the same thing. The Fury Corps. He looked surprised. Why so surprised, Toto? At last, we've been given our chance to shine. 
Oh, yeah, I guess we have, huh? There was something strange in his voice. Is something wrong? Oh, no, I just hadn't really thought about how I'm part of the Fury Corps. I mean, I know I am. I guess it just hadn't really hit me yet. Well, time to make up for all that sleeping during the day. Awesome! Way to go, Heisuke! Let's go get ready for... Ah! The roar of a cannon interrupted Nagakura, and the room immediately fell silent. Oh, are they here already? Apparently. We leapt to our feet at the sound of a second rapport that was followed almost immediately by the crack of splintering wood. I clacked my hands over my ears instinctively, and when I pulled them away, Hijikata was already issuing orders. No time to waste. Sounds like they got us surrounded. Damn it. Alright, let's move. We gotta push them back. Just as Hijikata had suggested, Satsuma troops had surrounded the magistrate's office. The cannon had been used to blow the gate open, and the soldiers were already streaming through the breach. Heh. <laughs> so they decided to come pay us a visit, huh? Well, that suits me fine. Now I don't have to walk my ass out there. He grinned and set off for the gate with a handful of other men. Sana drew his own sword and looked over at Heisuke. Well, let's get going, Toto. Time to show those Imperial troops why they should learn to fear the fall of night. His smile sent a cold shiver down my spine. I felt bad for being suspicious of him, but Sana had changed. The man I met long ago was someone I could have trusted with Heisuke, but Sana the Fury was... scary. Man, I really wonder how his romance route's gonna be. Hold on, Sanin. We're short on men. Do you think you can leave Heisuke here? What? Heisuke, I want you to keep an eye on Cheezer here, alright? Had he guessed somehow? Harada caught my eye and grinned, then grabbed his spear and ran off after Nogakura. Sanin watched him go, then shrugged. Uh, I suppose it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, look around us. The front line is everywhere. That's creepy looking. He drove his sword through a nearby Satsuma soldier in one lightning fast strike, laughed and ran toward the gate. The Fury Corps followed behind him, yelling battle cries. He looked like death. I shivered. Stay close. I'll keep you safe, but you have to stick with me. Yes, sir. And that was all he had time to say before the battle was upon us. Blood and bullets fell like rain, and all around us were the cries of wounded and dying. I felt like I was going to throw up. Damn it, they just keep coming. You alright? Yes, I'm fine. Are you okay? The battle had been going on for some time, and he'd been hit by both guns and swords in several places. Don't worry about me. Blood still leaked from his wounds, but the flow was quickly lessening and his wounds were closing themselves. I'm not human anymore, remember? This kind of stuff isn't going to kill me. What? Then something happened. I wasn't sure what. Only for that second, something wasn't... right. Even the soldiers we were fighting paused for a fraction of a second, as if they weren't sure what they had just seen was real or an illusion. Damn. Another bullet tore through his shoulder. I reached out to staunch the flow of blood, but before I could, the wound closed. Heisuke's glance lingered momentarily on his now-healed wound, and for a moment I saw sadness in his eyes. I told you, it doesn't hurt me. Go away! Uh, it happened again, this time I saw it. For a moment his hair was white. Whenever a bullet or blade hit him, I saw a look of sadness flicker in Heisuke's eyes as he watched his supernatural body mend itself. Why then was a grin beginning to stretch its way across his face? He's going mad. Is that all of them? Or is he starting to like the power? His grin reminded me of the grotesque smile I'd seen on, on the face of a fury mad for blood. I felt terror rise like fire in my breast, and before I knew it, I was crying out to him. Heisuke, that's enough! Let's go back now! What are you talking about? There's still more, right? Where's the next one? Where's the blood? Oh! There could be no doubt about it now. His hair was white as snow, and his eyes shone with a hideous thirst for blood. Heisuke pulled his sword from the stomach of the last Satsuma soldier with a wet, sickening sound. 
He lifted his hand covered in gore to his face and stretched out his tongue. No, Heiske, you can't! I threw my arms around him and tried desperately to pull his arm down and away. What are you doing? It was a stupid thing to do and I knew it. I knew quite well just how dangerous and uncontrollable fairies could be. But I couldn't bring myself to believe that Heiske could be like that. I cursed myself for not trying to stop him sooner. It's all right now. There's no one left for you to fight. At first, he looked at me with anger written plain across his face, furious that I had tried to restrain him, but then his eyes caught on the blood covering his hands and sword. What? What did I? The white suddenly left his hair, and the hand holding his sword fell to his side. He took one wavering step, then another. When he turned back to look at me, his face was twisted with grief, fear, and most of all despair. Oh. I... I don't think I can take this anymore. I feel like I get a little bit less human every day. It's... it's freaking me out. And... and I want to drink blood all the time. It's driving me crazy. He looks small, frightened, and sad. It's going to be okay, Heisuke. You're going to be fine. You're still human. No, I... I'm... Evenings look like morning to me. The moon's the sun. I'm covered in blood in it. It feels good. Of course it does, Toto. That's how it should be. Trust your instincts. No, Sanin, come back to the light side. Sanin? Dead men littered the ground, but Sanin stepped over them with no more concern than he would have afforded a stone. He held out his hand to Heisuke and beckoned. There's no reason to hold back. If you desire blood, then you should drink it. How else can you quench your thirst? Stop it, Sanin! You're going to confuse him! Confuse? No, I don't think so. What I'm suggesting is only natural. If your body needs blood to survive, then why shouldn't you oblige it? Telling a fury not to drink blood is like telling a human not to eat. Are you saying you'd rather he starve to death? Well, I... We aren't human anymore. We're furies. I can understand the pain he feels in a way you never will. In a sense, Heisuke and I are... brothers, you might say. He was right. As a fury, he would know what Heisuke was going through far better than I could. <sighs> With no real rebuttal, I hung my head in silence. I still felt he was wrong, but I had nothing to say. Sorry, Sonnen, but she understands quite a bit. More than you, I think. Heisuke. The pain he was feeling had brought him to his knees, but he looked up at San and me with a grin. Don't worry, okay? I'm not gonna drink blood. That's not something a human would do, right? You still consider yourself a human? A shame. You aren't. Binding yourself to human morals and values is foolish. But I, too, was once where you are now. I understand what you feel. If you are determined to refrain from blood, here. Ah, oh, this time I didn't have to discover the medicine on my own. What's this? A medicine Dr. Matsumoto made for us. It can suppress the bloodlust. I paused for a moment. Could such a thing really exist? But a muffled groan of pain from Heisuke brought me back to my senses. If it could help them, there was nothing to contemplate. Th thank you, Sanin. I'm hardly doing him a favor. This is a temporary measure at best. In the end, it would likely only prolong his suffering. A fury's pain will never truly depart until he drinks blood. Then he turned and walked off, but I had better things to do than watch him go. <coughs> Heisuke's hair had turned white again, and his eyes were now a deep red. He moaned in pain. I had to do something to help him. And this is where I need to save. Because the choices from here out determine the different endings. And this time around, we must give him the medicine. With shaking hands, I handed him the medicine Sonnen had given me. I didn't know how much it could help him, but it had to be better than drinking blood. Here, Heisuke, drink this! Uh, okay, better than drinking blood, right? The 
depends on who you ask. He swallowed the medicine and coughed. I held my breath. It had to take effect soon. Hang on, Heisuke. After what felt like an eternity, his breathing finally started to slow until it was nearly normal again. We fought as best we could, but it wasn't enough. Before long, the magistrate's office was in flames, and we were forced to retreat. Even that was nearly failure as well. The Imperial Army's weapons were far more advanced than anything we'd seen before, and we didn't know how to counter them. Our retreat degenerated into chaos, and Heisuke and I found ourselves separated from the rest of the Shinsengumi. There was no way for us to know who else might have survived, and we both knew where those who had would go. Osaka Castle Yoshinobu was there, as well as Kondo. What other destination could there be? Heisuke and I chose to go through the forest, and thereby avoid the Imperial Army, but it was January, and the forest was dark and cold. The black firs and trees surrounded us, and before long I began to feel as if they were the bars of a cage that had been suddenly closed around us. Are you doing alright? I know it's kind of rough getting through here, but it's going to be a lot worse if they catch us. I'm fine, really. I just... Are you okay? Of course I'm okay. I'm a city boy at heart, but the forest is so... No, no, I mean, your fury thing. He's been taken by the bloodlust during battle at the magistrate's office. But since then, he'd seemed fine. Still, there was no guarantee that it wouldn't happen again. In fact, it was very likely that it would, and that worried me. He must have felt my eyes on him because he sighed and lowered his sword from hacking away at the underbrush. I don't want blood. I was just thinking about Sanin. Sanin? He'd become a fury long before Heisuke, so he'd been dealing with the bloodlust much longer. How was he coping with it? Heisuke turned and looked at me, and I could see that the very same thoughts were going through his head. He leaned closer to me and spoke in a whisper, as if he were afraid someone might be listening. I think... I think Sanin's been drinking blood. I think that on the nights he goes out on patrol with the Fury Corps, he drinks blood for them and they kill. What? Don't you think that's a little... far-fetched? Well, you remember all those times the Fury Corps got in a fight, and afterwards the bodies of the men they killed had way more sword cuts than they should have. I think that was them trying to cover up what they were doing. Oh, no. There's no denying that his argument made sense. I'm a Fury. If nobody was there to stop me, there's a good chance I'd end up doing the same thing, too. He looked at me with a sad smile. Man, he's taking the fury thing much harder than anybody else did. I remember what it felt like at Abarano Koji. My chest hurt, and I could barely breathe. Everything looked kind of... dark. I wasn't thinking, you can't die until you see justice done, or anything like that when I drank the water of life. The truth is, I was just scared. I didn't want to die. The wind whipped through his hair across his face, hiding it. I kept silent. Whatever his reason was for telling me all this, it probably wasn't to get me to give him advice. So I became a fury so I could live, and now I'm wishing I'd never done that. What the hell's wrong with me? He laughed again, but it was easily the saddest sound I'd ever heard. I feel like this is just why I let the Shinsengumi to go with Ito. I made my own choice then too, but I regretted it pretty much right away. I missed my friends. I think a lot about what I'm going to do, but it seems like every time I made the wrong decision, and then I regret it and just want to quit. It's pretty pathetic. You're not the only person who does that. I do, and I'm sure all the other guys have regretted their choices sometimes too. I couldn't stay silent any longer. I reached out for him, and when our hands met, I felt him sure. My hands wrapped around his. Sometimes all I can think about is the things I've done that I regret. There are days when I hate myself. His hand felt cold and I gripped it tighter. He didn't pull away. But even on days like that, I just have to look for one thing that can make me happy. If I can find that one thing, then I can deal with whatever else is bothering me. I think that's how I get through life. I'm happy, you know. You might be a fury, but you're still alive. It was selfish of me to think that, let alone say it. But I didn't want him to die no matter what. Even if that meant he had to become a fury. I guess I'm kind of selfish, huh? I laughed awkwardly. Yeah, I guess you are kind of selfish. But I think it's only fair of you to let me be selfish. I want you to stay with me. 
when we're together, that makes me happy. He, he didn't mean forever, did he? No, surely I meant until we were out of the forest. Or something. But my attempts to temper my expectations meant nothing to my heart, which beat rapidly against my chest. Are you sure? I mean, you're really suffering right now, and I couldn't do anything to help you. Couldn't do anything? Are you serious? Man, you're even slower than I thought. I stared at him dumbfounded, but he only laughed. After a moment, he looked at me, and though his laughter faded, his grin didn't. Thanks, Chizaru. I think... I think if you weren't here, I would've gone nuts a long time ago. He let go of my hand and stood, then turned and held it out. This time, he was making the move. I felt happy. Yeah, it feels better when the guy makes the moves. To me, at least. Alright, we gotta hurry. If we don't get there soon, they're all gonna get lonely. Right. It didn't matter how far away Osaka Castle was, so long as I was with Heisuke, everything would be alright. And that was when I heard them. There! Shogun at soldiers! Heisuke! I know! Come on! Heisuke pulled me through the woods as the voices of our pursuers echoed behind us. The forest reflected the sound in such a way that at times it felt like we'd been surrounded. Heisuke gripped my hand tighter. Don't worry, I'm with you. And they can't shoot at us here. R right Eventually, the voices behind us began to fade. It seemed like we finally lost them when a new problem appeared. A far, far worse problem. Is it a demon? Kazuma! Amagiri! I thought that was right. What are you doing here? Two of the people I least wanted to see had been waiting for us, and we'd run right into them. When it rains, it pours. This war is approaching its climax. Oh, I didn't want to take the risk you might die somehow in the coming conflagration. After all, this fool with you is useless. He'll doubtlessly abandon you the moment he's faced with any real difficulty. Shut your hole, pal! I'd never abandon her to save my own ass. No way in hell! He stepped between Kazuma and myself and reached for his sword. Oh, Heisuke, even fear you is no match for him. Will you need my assistance? Oh, are you mocking me, Amagiri? I can't forgive that, you know. Not even from you. Do you really think I could ever lose to this runt? My apology. Heisuke leapt forward, not giving the demon time to finish. He moved so fast I could barely see him, but Kazuma seemed to have no such difficulty. Damn it! Their swords met with a metallic clang, and for a few seconds they fenced back and forth. That's just Kazuma playing with him. Then, without a word, Kazuma simply grabbed Heisuke by the face. You are too slow, too weak, too pathetic to be her protector. You have already lost. He slammed Heisuke's head into the forest floor. One. Two. Three. Now, be gone. I will take her. He sneered at Heisuke, ground his face into the dirt, and finally threw him back to slam against a nearby tree. Heisuke! Heisuke! He's gone. You, Chizuru Yukimura, are coming with me. N no I won't! I'll never do that! His voice showed no more remorse for what he'd done to Heisuke than a normal human might have for killing a fly. I glared at him furiously as I could. Then Amagiri spoke. Intriguing. It seems your fight has not quite ended. He seems different from when he was when we last fought. Was? What are you? A streak of cold steel appeared out of nowhere and slipped across Kazuma's cheek, leaving behind a thin line of blossoming red. I followed the steel to its wielder. Heisuke! Oh, thank goodness! Still alive, bastard. Yeah, of course! You really think that was enough to kill me? Please! He snarled at Kazuma, then turned to me. I spent my whole life making crappy decisions, and then regretting them, but... Even if it means I gotta become a fury to do it, I wanna protect you. I've never been so sure of anything before. The bruises Kazuma had given his face were already beginning to color, but he still looked... heroic. Heisuke... Hmm. You gained a few abilities that were never meant for you, and it's gone to your head. Very well. 
I will cut that head off and tear out your heart, you fake. Let's see you try. Kazuma lifted his sword again, fully prepared for battle this time. Heisuke, on the other hand, only stayed upright by leaning heavily on his sword. Not good. Before they could attack one another, a strong gust of wind swept across the battlefield. Fake, fake, fake. You know, I really think it's rather foolish to have anything to do with a man who says such things. Sen! Kimigiku! What were they doing here? Kazuma and Amagiri seemed surprised to see a stranger suddenly appear as well, but not nearly so much as I. She gave me a warm smile, and glanced around until her gaze landed on Heisuke. Um, Toto, was it? You've done well. He frowned, and his eyes flicked back and forth, from me to Sen. Of course! I realized he never actually met her before. Who the hell are you? Perhaps more importantly, are you here to get in my way? Oh, you don't know who I am? I suppose I am not terribly famous yet, though your companion seems to recognize me. She was right. Amigiri did seem to know her. Or you, one of the demons of Kyoto. Indeed, she is. My lady is from the demon clan of Kyoto. Her family rarely interacts with the eastern or western clans, but she is a direct descendant of the legendary Suzuka Gozen. Ah, oh, the rumored princess of the Yase. To think I might meet you here. Nonetheless, what does the descendant of Suzuka Gozen want with me? Suzuka Gozen? I couldn't make much of what they were saying, but from what I could tell, Sen was of a similar or possibly higher station than Kazuma. But it was what she said next that truly surprised me. Why am I here? That is simple. You have made it clear that you wish to have Chizuru, a female demon, give birth to your offspring. However, you have another option, a superior option right here. Wow, she's offering herself? Wait, and how is she a superior option? I thought my blood was more pure than hers. But the only other female demon present, indeed the only other female demon I was aware of, was Sen herself. Surely she couldn't mean... What about Kimigiku? Isn't she a demon too? Kazuma frowned. What are you saying? Exactly what I appear to be saying. If you are so set on having a child, then I shall produce one for you. I ask only that you cease your pursuit of Chizuru. What? She really did intend to take my place. Oh, I see. Then you are offering to become my wife? Wife? Oh, goodness, no. No one said anything about wives. I did not intend to marry you or become a part of the Cosma clan in any way. This is merely a contract, would perhaps be the best word, in the interest of maintaining a strong demonic lineage. Her own glare easily matched his. Cosma smiled. I see. Well, if you will bear my child, then that is certainly more than I could hope for. However, I see no reason to abandon my current. You insolent, ungrateful knave! Know your place! Kazuma jerked as if he'd been struck. Wow. I could never have imagined that she could be so... furious. The look she gave him was almost haughty. What clan could possibly offer you a more prestigious lineage than mine? Your child would be a descendant of Suzuka Gozen. You could take as many wives as you wished, but you would never sire the like again. To even consider any other woman as mother to your child is utter folly. You are the head of the Kazuma clan. Surely you have the foresight to see that. You have an impertinent mouth. His eyes narrowed to angry slits. But his fury lasted only a moment, and a thin smile split his face. Nonetheless, this is an interesting proposition. Oh, I see you have inherited the elegance of your predecessor, however. Very well. Once the Satsuma have overthrown the Shogunate, I will come for you. Oh, I suspect that will be soon. He gestured to Amagiri, and they turned to leave. They had gone several steps when Kazuma looked back over his shoulder at Heisuke and grinned. And we'll see what sharper words he has for Heisuke in the next episode, because it's time to stop here, and I've probably gone on longer than I should have. Wow, that's quite surprising of Sin to offer herself up like that. That was not something I expected at all but quite interesting. Anyway, hope to see you in that next video or some of my other ones, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do you really signing out? 
Bye-bye, everybody.